Bitcoin is currently setting up for the next potential move and it has been quite volatile out there. So big bounces to the upside, massive sell off to the downside, liquidity grabs and a whole lot more that's going on in the market. So we'll cover that and more today. Let's start off over here with the crypto bubbles chart. You can see that a lot of the altcoins are starting to uh, bounce quite aggressively, much more than what Bitcoin is at the moment. So I know a lot of people have that question on their mind. When is altcoin season? We'll cover that on today's show. As as well, as well as a couple of uh, economic data events which are coming up. So let's go straight on to that. And there's only really two high impact events which you have to look out for today. And that is gonna be the German CPI data which is coming out. So it's expected to drop down by 0.1 percentage points. So uh, keep an eye out on that. If that comes in better than expected, it could be indicative that uh, maybe Europe is starting to take control of the inflation. And then we do have the unemployment claims which is coming out as well later today for the US. Remember, this is a tick up, uh, which is expected. So from 191 to 196,000. And that typically suggests that bad news is good news, right? If these numbers are going up, then it's indicative that the economy is contracting and it just changes the likeliness of the Fed constantly raising their interest rates. So uh, let's continue on over here. You can see if you're on crypto Twitter and you've been scouring Twitter lately, uh, the, definitely the narrative of at the moment is the devaluation of the dollar, Bitcoin to $1 million, and basically other currencies are gonna start to smash the US dollar. So let's have a look at what the charts actually actually say, but um, this was just in from Watcher Guru, which is quite big. Uh, Saudi Arabia enters a trade alliance with China, Russia, India, Pakistan, and four Central Asian nations to step further away from the reliance on the US dollar. Um, and here's the whole article over here. So again, this narrative just keeps building its start about uh, 24 to 48 hours ago. And here you have the Kabisi letter, which has come out with uh, basically a currency composition chart showing that the dollar is devaluing and the other currencies are picking up. So he says here, over the last 25 years, the US, uh, the use of the US dollar for foreign exchange reserves has steadily declined from 72% down to 59%. Meanwhile, the euro usage is up slightly from 19% to 21%. The most important part, other currencies, including the Chinese Yuan, soared from four to 10%. So basically this is important for you to understand because of course we know that uh, the dollar is the major currency that we pay most cryptos against. So if the dollar does go down, cryptos go up. If the dollar goes up, cryptos typically go down in value. So here he goes on to say over the last two weeks, it's kind of been the situation. Saudi Arabia considers accepting the Chinese Yuan for oil sales. China and France complete their first LNG trade using the Yuan. Russia considers using Chinese Yuan as a reserve currency. Saudi Arabia partners with China to, re, to build a refinery for 83.7 billion. Uh, and China and Brazil agreed to use Chinese yuan in cross-border transactions. The percentage of global reserves in US dollars is down 72% in 99 to 59%. Now, is the US dollar dominance decreasing? Let me know in the comments, do you think that the US dollar domin dominance is decreasing overall? Um, I think that it is quite an interesting topic and there's always currency wars that are going on. You can read that book. I think it's by Joe Prickard is his name. And it's a book called Currency Wars, where they explain how different countries uh, come up with these plans of devaluing their, their um, competitor country or their uh, opposing country's currency. So here you have it again from Mario uh, Noffel, basically showing that, again, the dollar is being devalued. But then I like what he says of here, Donnelly Brent. Uh, he says here, to anyone who is not trading in 2004 to 2006 or 2011 or two uh, to, uh, 2001, the de-dollarization bullshit shows up every now and then. Don't worry, it's pure engagement bait, mostly from people uh, who know better. I've linked articles from those years, basically the years where they where they claim the dollar was devaluing. And he says, but I could find you one from every year since China entered the WTO. It's called King Dollar for a reason. And you can go into these articles, the panic about the dollar. Um, and there's a whole lot of them if you go look into it. So they always say, look at the chart, just look at the chart. And basically this is what the chart is showing me. We identified this quite a while back. Uh, basically the dollar had a major sell off over here. Big bounce set in a low high, but now it's forming a higher low. So you are looking for potential signs of relief. You have the low, higher low, and this is ultimately the next target for me personally. 
So I like to, when the masses go one way, I like to start to look for reasons to go the other way because that typically works very well. Uh, if you're a contrarian at the extremities, you don't wanna be a contrarian in the middle because you don't wanna fade the crowd. You want to go with the crowd and with the flow when you're in a strong training move, but when you're at the extremities, which is kind of like now, uh, then you should start to look for the opposing views. And that's showing that another 2.25% at the very least for the dollar. And then once it reclaims this key yearly level at 100, 103.49 then we can review from there now this is a, a a very very common misconception by the way if you go and i haven't pre-planned this i should have done it it just came to my mind now but if i had to show you what the dollar chart looks like against bitcoin uh, a lot of people think that if the dxy or the dexy continues on up that there's no possible way that bitcoin can enter into a bull run that is not true so you don't need to subscribe to that just because the dollar is increasing it does add a little bit of downward pressure to bitcoin but it doesn't mean that bitcoin cannot enter into a bull market. Um, so something to keep a close eye out on over the coming weeks. What is going on over here with the S&P 500 futures? Well, you can see it had a big move yesterday. We outlined on the previous show, I missed my show yesterday, I apologize, uh, that we had this accumulation pattern, right? So it was basically holding with higher lows. And then we also had a strong horizontal resistance, which now it has smashed through and it's closed a candle above. Due to the correlation of Bitcoin to the stock market, that is one reason why crypto would have rallied. Now you kind of want to see, is, is it able to uh, support this level here? So when it comes to trading, you always want to ask, did you give up a level or did you gain a level with regards to your trade opportunities? So what do I mean by that? Well, if you have a look over here, so you lost a level, you gave up that level. Then you came, you started to consolidate within this region. What do I mean by this region? You consolidate between the mid range and the 0.25. Then you can see that the S&P 500 reclaimed that level. So it won that territory. It's always like warfare, it won that territory, reclaimed this level, came back up. So now what you wanna be asking yourself, is the S&P 500 going to win over this level, this 0.75 level? If it does, and it can successfully continue to hold the yellow line and the 0.75, flipping this from what was previous resistance into support, then you can target the range high. This would line up with some interesting targets on Bitcoin. However, on the opposite end of the stick, if it can't win this level over and it loses it once again, coming back down, then Bitcoin has those 24 to 25K targets uh, as a possibility. So for S&P to range high, 33K, S&P 500, if it goes back down towards mid range, that's 25 for Bitcoin to correlate it. Pretty much as simple as that. I saw in the comments, uh, let me know if you are present. I see that we, we do have a lot of the usuals, Bantagal, Swanee, uh, we have your Mystic, Hodler, BT, Waylon, uh, Dizzy. I see you guys in the comments over there. Let me know if you are here. Also smash the like button, it does help to get the video content out. It gets the algorithm going and brings the video content onto other people's feeds. I would really appreciate it. It's the least that you guys could do. Um, and then I wanted to take a look at natural gas. I saw in the comments before that a lot of you were asking about natural gas over here uh, because we dropped this as a trade opportunity in Discord. So it has come into an interesting level. If you do take a look at natural gas from a very high time frame perspective, let's take a look over here. And it's very interesting the way that this all plays in with the fundamentals, right? With uh, all these partnerships between the big oil countries, uh, as well as with China. And then here you have gas, natural gas for the US. This is US natural gas. Look at that, absolutely nuked from the top to the bottom. It looks worse than a Bitcoin bear market chart. So uh, quite a big sell off, but it's coming into a key level now, which is important. You have the pivot point from uh, all the way back in June of 2020. For those of you who were trading uh, back in March of 2020, you'll remember that when uh, we had all the lockdowns and everything, uh, gas actually and oil went uh, the futures charts at least went negative, which is quite a sight to behold. Now you have this pivotal point that you can run up here. So that's a long-term trend line since the 2020 lows. And then you can kind of build a range with the yellow being the range high, range low over here, and the white being the mid range. Now the idea behind this trade idea is that somewhere within this region, you are more than likely going to get a reaction and a bounce. Now I took a trade directly onto that exact trend line over there, and you can see quite a big bounce up. Um, so 
when altcoins aren't giving us what we want, we can start to look to things like this because if <laughs> if natural gas does bounce from here, you can see what a massive upside move you could potentially have just as a relief bounce, not necessarily calling a bull market or anything in gas. Uh, so we place one bid over there. We put the second bid over here at 2.06. Uh, Seven, so on the yellow line, 2.07. And then we will take it from there. If it can't hold those regions, we'll cut the positions and we'll look to add lower within the mid range. All the information is there in the Discord group. And if you do want to trade it, because I know a lot of you are like, well, where can you even trade this? Prime XPT is one of the places they do offer it over here. Um, I'm trading natural gas there. They have a whole bunch of different uh, commodities as well as a couple of stocks and then crypto, of course, as well. So keep an eye out on that. Now, big thing that's going to be coming up is the quarterly close. And you can see the Bitcoin implied volatility at the moment is starting to rise. You can see from this chart over here. So Wu Blockchain says tomorrow is the quarterly settlement day and quarterly contracts are currently trading very actively with short term implied volatility continuing to rise. It's up almost 10 percent in one day. For the monthly term, block trades accounted for more than half of the total volume uh, dominated by options buying and bull spreads. So I'm going to show you why this is important, because if the volatility does pick up and certain liquidity levels could be met, then it's a potential that you could get a sharp reaction either to the upside or the downside. And that creates a trade opportunity. Uh, you know, the quick moves are where you can make some good gains very quick, get your money in and out uh, in the matter of a couple of hours. And this may be something that would cause that. So we'll get onto the lower time frame levels in a moment high time frame. I just wanted to show you what we're looking at perspective wise on the quarterly chart over here. So this was the long term target. We had it for a very, very long time when we were hanging around those 18 to 16 K levels. Uh, I outlined that there was a potential that you could have a massive relief rally and still turn over and come back down. So it all depends on how you get there. And that's a very important concept to understand when it comes to trading. It's not always about the price level that gets hit. It's often also always about how did you get to that price level? So the close for this is going to be super, super important. Now, what I would say about this is if you see price action close like this with a full bodied green candle, then technically that implies that there's most likely going to be continuation from here going forward. So where would the continuation levels be? Well, you just want to mark out what sticks out like a sore thumb to your eyes when you're looking at a chart. And what sticks out to me is definitely this level over here. So you can see the way that that level has been respected on a quarterly basis. And if you were to go into a monthly chart, you would see it would also be in alignment. So 35K is kind of where one of the areas that caps a top side. If it's not going to be this 28.9 and we close like this, then expect continuation within the next quarter. But that could still prove to be just a relief rally. Unfortunately, it takes time to start to enter into a new bull market. Although we have a lot of telltale signs when you look at um, the on-chain metrics, uh, you still need to take it with a pinch of salt, right? You need to think to yourself, how does the market work with relation to both the halving cycle as well as traditional markets? Well, traditional markets are currently in a contraction phase, right? We're moving from stagflation into recession. That is not necessarily an environment where you want to be uh, mega long on altcoins yet. But you can still play those relief rallies, which is exactly what we did. Went fully long at $19,700 publicly and brought the community along with us. And now we're starting to consider that uh, where is this top going to be set? So you want to think about those things, right? That you don't want to go and build this long-term investment portfolio in low-cap altcoins when the traditional markets are still in a contraction phase. When they go into expansion phase and uh, money comes easy, so free money, right? As they say, uh, they're printing and interest rates have been completely cut uh, and you're going through quantitative easing, which yes, there have been indications that we could be going in there, but you don't want to count your, uh, your chickens before they hatch as the saying goes. So be careful. Doesn't mean you don't play the long side, just means that you want to be concentrated when playing the long side. Concentrated in your mind as well, but I actually mean concentrated from the perspective of in one or two coins. So Bitcoin and Ethereum, because that way, the less positions you hold, the easier it is to manage those positions. And if things start to turn over aggressively and quickly, you can cut those positions uh, in a matter of minutes. So very, very important. That's what we're looking at over there. Let's move on. 
liquidity. Liquidity has ticked up with China. I know that Run covered this on his show yesterday. That's been the biggest uptick in liquidity. But what really matters to us in crypto is not so much what the major central bank assets are doing. People's Bank of China, net years liquidity in uh, in the United States. Of course, this it is important. This is important. We want to see it tick up. But what really matters to us is really the stablecoin supply. Uh, we need this to go up. This this is really needs to turn green if we want a healthy market, right? So there it is. Pretty much since the market top, uh, which took place in what November of 2021. So you can see shortly after that, it came into uh, 2022, early 2022, just after the market cycle top happened, then the USD stablecoin supply started to roll back over. So once it starts to move sideways, which it looks like it's slowly starting to try and do that. If this can start to track sideways and reaccumulate and move up and we can get a big injection of uh, stablecoin supply into the market, that's our own little version of uh, quantitative easing for crypto and therefore crypto will have a much easier time rallying. Okay. So keep an eye out on that. Uh, we'll watch it over the next couple of weeks to months. Uh, Dylan Leclerc shows over here that it's never been harder to mine Bitcoin. Uh, and you can see that from the whole uh, difficulty, the, the mining drawdown from uh, the difficulty adjustments. And remember each halving cycle, every four years, it becomes more and more difficult and the reward is less and less, which is kind of what these MVRVZ scores are worked out based upon, as well as if you have a look over here at the hash ribbons, this is from uh, Capriol Investments, if you put that on your on your trading view, and we got the hash ribbon buy signal. We also identified this quite a long time ago. This was one of the reasons that we were looking to switch our buys to potentially turn long. Now, in the history of this signal, there's only been two occasions where you had the buy signal and it was a failed signal two occasions out of, I think it's in the region of 20 or something. So basically what this suggests is anytime that you receive the blue buy signal, never, ever, ever again did you revisit the lows except for the other two occasions. The two occasions was the black swan event of COVID. The second occasion was the FTX collapse, which otherwise this would have been the bottom. So FTX collapse, once you have the blue buy signal, that level should have held. You should never have revisited below that zone again. FTX happened and you had a forced liquidation going a little bit lower. So same thing is true. You got another one over here. That means that these lows that are at 15,500-ish, according to this, and this is another black swan event, of course, which they do happen. They happen every couple of years. Uh, and this is another one. It's unlikely that you're going to break those lows. And what it, you have to ask yourself as well, what is the probability that it happens twice in a row? So you have failed signal after failed signal. That's never happened before. So probabilistically, it looks like we want to buy every single high low that comes. Now we were looking for lower. Um, f I mean, no, no shame in saying that. I was definitely looking for a retest first of the range high. You can see the range high area over here, which is coming at 25,500. But you could see that price started to turn back over and it basically got front run on those buys. And therefore it looks like we're setting this in as the potential next high low. We still at a pivotal point. I'll show you what I mean now. Now, yesterday I didn't do a show, but I updated you every step of the way, um, basically saying that I did get back into the market. I managed uh, once I saw the way that these wicks were forming over here and the one candle started to look like a reversal candle. I did get my positions back in. So I'm currently still holding, basically sold up there, bought back about 4% lower. So getting myself a little bit of extra Bitcoin in Bitcoin terms. Um, and now I'm still waiting to see what comes next. High time frame though, everything is looking good, especially if in three days and 18 hours, we can close the weekly chart like this. Then you're closing for the second time above the middle band of the Gaussian channel, which is indicative that you should expect the next move to track on up over probably the course of the next month or so into the top side of the Gaussian channel. Now the Gaussian channel is constantly declining, right? Currently, as of this week, it's sitting at 32,946. Um, that will track down each week. So let's see, maybe by 
maybe by towards the end of April, the Gaussian channel is going to be somewhere between about 31 and $31,500. So that's what you want to look at. Keep an eye out on that, the Gaussian channel, any pullbacks that go into these moving averages, if we do get some sort of a big crash down, this is still an opportunity uh, to add to your position. My trading system suggests that I should, I should add aggressively into the twenty-two dollars to $23,000 region. If prices get to twenty-two dollars to twenty-three. dollars my system says add aggressively because soon after that, if you don't bounce out of that region quickly, then it's invalidated and this whole thing would prove to be a bull trap. Now you have to be wise and smart in how you get to those levels, right? Um, if if you, you obviously don't want to just uh, hold the full long from this position and wait for it to get all the way there and then start to add more into the position, you do of course want to shave profits. Now it works very simply like this. When you look at trading, always think of it like this. Okay, you have a range. Let's quickly change that up. Pretty simple. You always think of it like this. You have a range. Then you kind of mark out right, let's just say more or less your, your mid-level. And this can work like it can work like this with indicators as well. So where do you want to buy, right? You want to buy when prices are at a discount in the discount zone. You want to sell when prices are at a premium. So that's the premium zone. So you can use the Gaussian channel to assist you with that as well. So basically we're in the premium zone now. This is not necessarily where you want to be aggressively buying if you've missed the whole move. You want to sell into the premium zone and you want to buy into the discount zone. So you can see, right? Same thing that works the same way as a range like this where you have the range high and range low. I feel like my mouse is going crazy. It's doing its own things over here. Range, <laughs> range high and range low. So in the middle over there, premium discount, same thing. So discount zone, premium zone. Let me know in the comments, does that make sense? Hopefully my mouse didn't make you go too crazy over there. Okay, next, uh, four day chart over here. We work level to level. Again, you want to see, did you Always remember that, what I'm saying over here. Did you gain a level or did you give up a level? So far, what happened over here? Let's just reverse price action. So price was messing around over here. We could see this is gonna be a big breakout zone. Once we broke out that level, this is now significant. It means we've gained this level, 24,550, 25,000, you can round it up. So around that $25,000 level, in the future, this is gonna be a very, very important zone that must be defended eventually we probably will revisit the zone. Like, I don't know whether we first push up towards 33K and then come down, but eventually this zone will be, uh, it will be retraced to, and that will be an important zone to hold. Now, the same thing is true over here. This is kind of the next level that we're looking at to hold. So I'll make that bigger so you can see it nicely. There we go. That's the next level that we want to see hold. If price can continue to push up here and then start to consolidate, then we're going to move this, this up from 27,481 the level to hold will become the next zone over here, which is going to be somewhere around 28,200. And you can see the way that price action, when you start to enter into uh, a trending market, it kind of just moves in a stutter step fashion, right? So up, okay, that's a level to clear. You break up, hold that level, now you create a new level to clear. Maybe you go up over here, then we'll have a new level to clear. And then you just continue to take it and you work level to level. And this is the power of trend trading. This is why you don't wanna fade a trend. Some of the, the absolute wealthiest uh, traders of all time were trend traders. Go and have a look uh, historically what's happened within, the, within markets. Guys that took $20,000 into $128 million, $128 million, just by sticking with the trend. So if you're establishing an uptrend and you have a position established, don't fade it. This also brings me to the next point. It's important to have multiple different uh, trading portfolios, right? Because you want one of your portfolios to be a big portfolio, spot portfolio that you kind of trend trade and you don't mess around too much with that. You, you want a dollar cost average portfolio where you just in a disciplined fashion buy day in and day out. So kind of like this, Let's pull this across over here. 
there you go. Uh, this one over here, this is just a small one that I'm running just to show you guys as an experiment, the power of what can be done by dollar cost averaging. And you just buy day in and day out, you continue to buy. And then you're obviously gonna have your lower uh, time frame position or portfolios that you trade on a day-to-day -day basis. And then you use the profits from that and you filter that into either your huddle position or into your, uh, your spot portfolio. So, We'll cover that at a later stage. I'll go more in depth. I don't want the show to go on too long, but basically that's what I'm saying. So let's have a look over here at Bitcoin on a um, zoomed in time frame. So the other one was four day. Now we're on a daily time frame. So as you can see over here, again, these are all the levels. We asked ourselves level to level to level. Now you'll remember from the previous show that I showed you, this was the prior range. Just a quick reminder, I know most of you know this, and we are looking for Bitcoin now to reestablish a new range. So to create this as the, uh, the range for the next coming weeks to months. And then what that means is, are we gonna hold the mid range over here? Are we gonna go down to the range low again? Or are we just gonna move straight back up? Whichever thing happens, it doesn't really matter. Once you start to move up towards this level, if you do get to the range high, eventually you're going to come back down to the range low. If you can hold the mid range over here, then you have a trigger plan. Then you say, okay, it's holding over here. Looks like we need to move up towards this zone. If you can't hold above the mid range, then you can short it back down over here on your day trading portfolio and then reestablish uh, spot positions over here, uh, anticipating that it's going to hold and move up. Now, what do I think? So, I think that this order block area is very interesting. It's very, very important. This is the order block on the left-hand side that led to the major breakdown. And this is one of the reasons why I had a bias for price eventually returning towards that 30K region. Now the question is, once you get here, what's gonna happen next? How high are you gonna go? So if it's gonna be up only and max pain is towards the upside and you get into this region over here, there is gonna be a lot of liquidity in this box. So this box is basically based on the order block over here this area just above. If price pushes into this region, and remember I said it depends how you get there. If you get there like this, let me explain. If you get there like this, so if price kind of continues to consolidate, maybe you lose that level, regain the level, lose the level, regain the level, and you're slowly moving there, then I'm going to change my narrative. I'm going to change what I'm about to say, because then I'm going to say, well, this is actually more bullish and I would expect continuation from this level. And then I'll probably just join another range expecting that that level gets held. But, so listen up, but it depends how you get there. If we're going to move there fast, if we're going to move there aggressively like this in a matter of next week, so within a couple of days to next week, that move is gonna to be too quick. If you move up too quick from the lows, always you get slammed down even harder. Then your, your lower targets can drop even further down. So if you had a target of 25, then it's possible that you're gonna smash through that and you're gonna go all the way back down to 21. And the reason for this is very simple. It's just because it's momentum, right? If you have such a big, quick move up that leaves a lot of people sidelined, so like this, big move up quick all the way to the upside. It leaves all these people sidelined. It means people were basically market buying to get into these positions. You're not forming a strong base of support. So if you start to turn over, all these people want to keep their profits. They panic out of the position and they start to sell. Boom, 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 boom. That creates a cascading effect towards the downside. And then obviously you go much, much lower. Now, this is what I'm kind of looking for. If this level gets held, then obviously we're going to play this range. So we're going to play the level between 28,000 and 31,500. What I think will happen is this would be where a major deviation would take place. If I see a deviation and you get back under over there, I'm definitely entering a short stop goes above. And then you're looking to short down here, TP1. And then the next TP is going to be down to the previous over here, what was the previous um, range high? So that's 25K, right? There's a big short. So it goes from here. Let's work that out percentage wise. You're looking at from there to there, that is a 20% move. Now, if altcoins don't start rallying against Bitcoin soon and this scenario plays out, altcoins are going to get absolutely smashed on the downside move if that does take place. Remember that deviation could happen at any time. The deviation that we're looking for could technically take place over here as well. And so far, 
in the early hours of the morning, uh, well, for me, probably late hours if you're in the US, I will show you the chart. There was a big push up over here. And on the low time frame, it is starting to look like a swing failure pattern, which would technically activate a short trade back down to $25,000. So uh, I'm just trying to give you ideas here on how to play this, depending on what happens, because I'm not always going to be live. I was sleeping last night when that happened. So this will help you in the future to think for yourself and to figure out ways that you can get into these positions. We'll get onto that swing failure pattern in the low time frames shortly. Um, okay. Ethereum Bitcoin chart over here. So not looking good. Uh, this is starting to break down already. That means that obviously altcoins would technically suffer if this does break down. It's spending a long period of time over here. Yesterday, it started to look good where ETH BTC started to rally up, but it got immediately retraced over here. And now this candle is open below. So it's open below the trend line. Let's say if it starts to close uh, multiple candles or even one candle below over here, then you're probably going to have a target all the way back down. Remember from the previous shows that I showed you, that's indicative of a 20% move from the top to the bottom. That means that altcoins will get hit even harder, right? Uh, against Bitcoin. If Bitcoin goes down 10% and ETH BTC is 20% down from Bitcoin, it's going to be double to triple the, the pain that Bitcoin would feel. Okay, next. Total two, still struggling, can't break this area. This, this area is a lot of resistance, 608 billion. That is the zone that you wanna be watching. You got wick after wick after wick, straight rejections. It just can't make it through. Uh, show me candles that start closing above here, and then I might start to get a little bit of interest in the altcoins and uh, Ethereum. But for now, it's definitely still Bitcoin season. Same thing is true over here on total three. Uh, can't make it through its trend line. Remember, total two has already broken this trend line. If you look at total three, there's been no break of that trend line. So that means that most of the most of the, the flow of money has gone from Bitcoin into ETH, which gave it enough momentum to break this, right? But then if you correlate that to the ETH BTC chart, the one I just showed you, and you show that this is starting to break down, then you can imagine that total two is probably going to break down and then total three is going to be hit even harder. So that's what we're watching over there. There's no action plan that's taken place yet where we can act off of that. Okay, let's look over here. Um, daily chart. Okay, very simply put, the most important levels to be holding if price does start to turn down aggressively, put on the 200 MA and the 200 EMA on your daily chart. You wanna see these levels hold. The first one is the EMA because it moves quicker than the MA, uh, the, the white one. That would be a big, big area of interest. Remember, my trading system says that I should be buying aggressively if price does happen to come back down here. This would be a gift, by the way, in my opinion. If it starts to lose that level, cut all positions, big bull trap, cap overs right, uh, and yeah, we can bring him on the show to, to, to run a victory lap. But until then, he's not. He's not right. Okay, next. This is what we're looking at over here. Two scenarios. Are we going to have the swing failure pattern over here? Are we going to have, this could already be the, the scenario that I outlined yesterday. Let's quickly, um, I'll just move that up actually. So I was looking at this, a little bit of a push up deviation and then come back down. Or is it going to push up and hold? So we kind of still in the middle of that decision process. I assume that over the course of today and maybe tomorrow, that decision will likely be made. If so it, it's quite difficult to trade at the moment. You're in, basically, you're in no man's land, you're in mid-range. And if you were holding a long position from the bottom, you may as well continue to hold it until such time as you have confirmed uh, up or down. I will show you what, how to confirm that on the lower time frame chart. That's what we're watching over there. Remember, the potential buy zone was based not only off of the range high, the previous range high, which is this region over here at 25, but also if you put a FIB retracement level on, taking from the bottom to the top of the move, then you have the 0.382. Now in trending moves, the 0.382 FIB level is oftentimes the level where price will bounce into and then continue on up. So maybe we don't have a confirmed local top yet. That means that basically if price pushes higher and it goes, let's say to 33K, then we'll just con we'll just raise this, right? So let's, let's pretend price is going to Let's look at our range over here. Let's pretend that price is going to go to 32K and then look at what that would look like. So let's say price goes to 32K. Now you can mark your FIB level. Then your 382 comes into the zone that we were previously at. That means that if price pushes up, when it comes back down, it might come back down to this zone over here. 
Next, um, liquidity levels. Now, the liquidation level was technically hit. This is from High Block Capital. So you can see they say into the sea of liquidity. There's all the liquidity coming in just above $28,000, around that twenty-eight, twenty-nine. I think it was $29,000 to $29,200 to be absolutely precise. And if you have a look at that move, there it was. A lot going on over here. So let me make this bigger and zoom in. Okay. This happened uh, US time at about 10.35, so it was a couple of hours ago. So you had the big push up, you literally grabbed that liquidity at 29,000, exactly 192. So is it good enough? Is it good enough that it grabbed the liquidity? I would say it grabbed the liquidity, smashed back down, and you can tell over here, look at that time, at that same time, Longs got liquidated and shorts also got liquidated. So you had a big liquidation spike over there. So I'm currently in the trade right now, still in the long trade that I that I re-added. Uh, and just before the big move up, I re-added that. I can't remember the price. I think it was 27,200-ish. And now I'm kind of viewing this, right? So I'm gonna show you first on a daily chart just to give you perspective. If the swing failure, let's go four hour, that's too big. If the swing failure pattern is confirmed, that would open the opportunity for a short trade. And the short trade would look like this. I notice now on the four hour chart, it lines up the range high, also lines up with the 200 EMA, which is the blue line over here. So this would be the trade setup. If the swing failure pattern gets confirmed, you would be entering from wherever that confirms. Stop goes above the previous highs where the liquidity was grabbed and you would be going short down. First TP would be at about 26,000, so mi the mid level, 26,500. Final TP would be all the way down at 25.5. So let's zoom in and, and take a closer look. I'm watching this on a very low time frame at the moment because I'm obviously actively in this trade. So I look at it, I'd zoom in when it's an area of interest. I'm on the five minute chart. Just quickly make that nice and neat. There we go. Okay, this is kind of the line in the sand for me over here at the moment, this level. 28,576 because it lines up with all of this. So I wanna see this level hold. And so far it is doing so. I also want to see that the low low time frame moving average, which is the red one, the 50 EMA, I want to see that hold. And then definitely if you start to lose this blue one, I'm going to be completely out of those positions. I'm going to cut the position. So for now, I'm currently watching. This forms its own version of a range. I know there's a lot going on here chart wise, but if you take from the top of the move and you move that across, that would be a range high. Take the bottom wick move it across, that would be your, your uh, range low. And then you can work out the midpoint and you wanna see that mid-level hold. We right now, just around that mid-level, uh, cu currently consolidating within this region. So in order to get the trigger, you need to see a break in structure. Yes, this was already a big uh, Darth Maul wick, as they call it. Now you want to see price action change. So let's look at this. Currently holding higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, you're kind of consolidating. I would wait for something like this. If you come back down below the white line, lower low, maybe you hit that moving average, bounce up one more time. As you set that next lower high, that's it, I'm out. I cut the position and I'll move into a short trade. So I hope that helps. Please let me know in the comments, does that make sense? Does that help? Okay, let's see. All you bears are gonna to belong to us. I love banter, 12K are still in disbelief. Capo is a cap. <laughs> why they grabbed the liquidity? I don't know, bro. I don't know why they grabbed it. Okay, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments. Also, while you're at it, please give the video a like, smash the like button, hit the bell notification, subscribe to the channel, uh, do all the usual due diligence over here. Okay, so Jay says 32K, then down to 25. I think that's very possible. Uh, you could push a little bit further, uh, stop out the early shorts as well, uh, and then really get them into disbelief and then 
maybe you start to come down. I think also from a psychological perspective at uh, 30K is where the minds of most people start to really pivot. Uh, that's when, because we kind of in a disbelief phase now, having taken this move all the way from the 18K region, almost up to 30 in short order. Uh, once you start to clear that level, people, they just think in whole numbers, right? Uh, under 30, bad, over 30, good. And then usually you get that little deviation. Okay, guys, I think that brings us towards the end. Please make sure that you smash the like button. Also, I uh, do want to mention, yes, also for the sponsors, everything is in here that you need. You do get sign-up bonuses. Uh, check out OKX. They do have a big promotion running where you can win a Tesla. If you don't want the Tesla, that's fine. Take the money. You can see when you click on the link, it will show you your reward in USDT, or you can choose the luxury prize. Every week, they are giving away something. Um, so I think Rand may... James, do you know if it's Rand given away the phone or anything yet? Supposed to, he hasn't yet. Okay, Rand has not yet given away the phone, but he probably will. Okay, that's 27th. I'll, I'll remind him. He's supposed to give the phone and the MacBook away. Okay, that's it from me, guys. I will see you all on tomorrow's video. I uh, appreciate each and every one of you and trade safely out there. Cheers for now.